many of our Bible lessons and the things we talk about, the things we preach, there seems to be one subject, though there are many. And the question, and which is a good question, where did sin come from? Why did God? Was it God? So let's find out. John 9. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. The guy's born blind. Blind. Yeah. Born blind. His disciples asked him, say, Master, who did sin? This man? His parents? Or that he was born blind? Now, the rabbi, the Pharisees' teaching was, sin caused this man to be blind in the womb because of his parents. That was the teaching. And the disciples were, what's the truth? And Jesus answered, neither this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest to him. Now, we're going to look at some scripture here. In John chapter 9, verses 1, 2, and 3, it's dealing with the blind, not sin in general. So the man's mother, the man's father, or even him himself in the womb, they didn't cause him to be born blind. Something had to do it. Now, there are babies that are born addicted to drugs because the mother did drugs in the pregnancy. There are things that babies are born with, defects, diseases, troubles, problems, because of what the mother or the father did before, during, and the pregnancy of the conception. And there are diseases, ailments, and troubles, and problems of babies born. It wasn't the mother. It wasn't the father. It was not the baby. It happened. It's a thing called sin. Romans. Chapter 3. Verse 23. Now we got to get one simple fact down. Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All. Now I have had the privilege of one person in my life of ministry has told me he's never sinned. I gave him the verse. All have no, no, not me. I know everything. Okay, well, that's not what we're talking about. All, I am a sinner. You are a sinner. Now, you don't necessarily do my sins, and I don't necessarily do your sins. But we are sinners. When it comes down to the basic fact of sin, we all break the nine commandments. We're not under the Sabbath. That's Jewish. Paul brought, brought up the nine commandments and then talked about the Sabbath for the Christian. We broken the ten commandments throughout our life. You watch a TV ad and you see something. You listen to a radio ad and you see something. You drive by a car lot or you see a half-dressed woman. That's coveting. You broke the law. You call out sick from your boss and you're not sick, you lie. You you go home, you empty your pockets, and you got a pen. That's not your pen. You stole. Those are the commandments. You woke up this morning, you did not put God first on your mind. That's the first commandment. So all have sinned. Plain and simple. So chapter 6, written to Christians. I know we use this for evangelism, but Romans 6.23 is written to Christians. For the wages of sin is death. 
We're going to just stop right there. What causes cemeteries and graveyards to be filling? You know, it's amazing. Of all the cemeteries and graveyards, I know. I've never seen one be filled. I've never seen a graveyard with a sign over the gate full. Sorry. What fills them up? When we had a ministry Saturday morning, when we come home, we pass by a graveyard, a cemetery, whatever you want to call it. Almost every weekend, there was a funeral. You say, Uncle Joe got hit by a bus. Okay. Grandma Sally the cancer. Okay. My boss Dave had a heart attack. Okay. Larry got eaten by a shark. Okay. Fred was a shipwreck and drowned at sea. Tom, 4th of July fireworks, killed himself, blown himself up. Oh. Okay, those are fine. Terry overdosed. Margaret simply died. Closed her eyes and she went on to eternity. Okay, and those are things that fill the death certificate. Now, I've been widowed twice. Both my wife's certificates of death has a cancer. My wife Lisa died of breast cancer. My wife Tracy died of lung cancer. Okay. But that's not the answer. Because there ought to be a division, a line on the death certificate, the main foundation line. What caused the death of this person? Sin. For all have sinned. And then under sin, there's a category. The Greyhound Buzz, the overdose, died in their sleep, drowned, whatever it is. You see, death caused is under the category of sin. Sin causes death. Everybody has sinned. All have sinned. And the wages of sin is that you go to a job, you work 10, 20, 30, 40 hours. You want 10, 20, 30 hours, 40 hours on your paycheck. Okay? You are born. Psalms 51. Psalms 51. You are born. I don't care if you're a test tube baby. Psalm 51.5. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity. Remember that word iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Now, does that mean mom, you know, she was a whore? She was an adulteress? Maybe she was smoking pot while she was... No, 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 no. Because even if you have a clean husband and wife, born again, not born again, and, and, and they're, they're a husband and wife, and, and they're in the marriage bed, and they conceive a child. That child has been conceived in iniquity. That child is in sin. That, I mean, is there a life in the womb? The writer of Psalms 51 says, in that womb, that, that infant, that child, that embryo, that life is already iniquity and sin. Explain to me, explain to me, Stalin, why are there untimely, premature deaths? Why do some women, the baby dies in the womb? Because of sin. He say, Starlet, wait a minute, I know this Christian woman, and I do. I know I know these two Christian women, and they try to have babies. And, and uh, to me, they were remarkable. They were clean living. But, I mean, we're all sinners. 
I don't think they did anything extraordinary, insane, or anything like that. And, and the babies just kept dying in the womb. Why? Is it the mother? Is it the father? The disciple said no. It could be, but in many cases it's not. But what is the cause of death? Again, that death certificate ought to say sin. Then, whatever the cause. Sin is the primary cause of death. But they're not going to put the truth. Isaiah. Isaiah 45. Now, we've looked at sin. We see that everybody does it. Listen, that newborn baby, that young baby that's in the crib, it's 1.30 in the morning. That baby starts screaming. It's diapers dry. It's tummy is not hungry. There's nothing bothering that baby. That baby just gets an inkling. I need that whatever that thing is that comes running to take care of me. Hold me. Well, that's already. That's the sin of thinking of myself. I don't care about mommy sleeping. I don't care about daddy sleeping or grandma's taking care of me. I want that big person, whatever that thing is, I want it to come take care of me. That's sin. That child grows up and, and there's cookies on the counter and he steals a cookie and runs away. He's eating a cookie in secret. That's stealing. Where did they learn that? Where do children learn? Not me. The dog did it. I feel sorry I had a dog named Kitty. I'm the one that named it. So you see, I've been odd since I've been a child. And it's amazing what Kitty used to do. And if Kitty could speak, Kitty would be pointing a paw at No, it was him. I was, I, in, my, I, in my house, I was the only child. Okay? That child is a sinner. Before long, that child is going to break nine of those commandments. Before he's two years old. And that child dies. Choking. And there's all kinds of crib death and all that. Okay, yes. But he died. She died. Because... They were conceived in sin. All have sinned. Their very fact is that there are babies in the womb that die. If they're not life, if they're not human, they wouldn't die. You would, you would go to an abortion clinic, and if they were not human, you couldn't kill them. The very fact this is an abortion clinic, you kill them, shows they're human. Now look at this one. Isaiah 45, verse 7. I form light. I create darkness. I make peace. And create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Now this verse here is truly misrepresented by many. And some people go to this verse and see, look at that, God made sin. That's not what it says. God formed the light, God created the darkness, Genesis 1. God can give you peace. And God created evil. Now what we want to do is we want to take the word evil. And we want to make the word say sin. Okay? Now, let's say, for instance, we take the word nail. N-A-I-L. Well, if somebody said, hand me a nail, 
and he's got a hammer in his hand, in his hand you're not going to hand him your nail that's on your finger because that's not going to hold a picture up. That's not going to hold timber up. And if he whacks that with a hammer, that nail is going to be black and blue in the morning, if not by night. That's not the nail he means. Now, let's say, you know, you go to one of these nail places. I don't know, is it called a salon? And you sit down and you say, oh, I like that red nail polish. So, okay, and you go and get the bottle of red polish. And you pull out a brad, a six-penny nail or a spike. All right, here you go. Wait a minute, what's that nail? You got to see that a word can have more than one definition. Now, evil is one of those weird words. Evil can mean sin. And evil can mean the consequences of sin. Okay, and then let me give you the example. What, what happens? It is evil. It is sin to smoke tobacco products. My wife Tracy did that. I prayed, I prayed and prayed and prayed that she quit. And, you know, she wouldn't listen. She smoked. And she smoked. One day she's in the hospital. And she's had tests and she's coughing, she's coughing. Doctor says, it's lung cancer. All right, so the evil is she smoked tobacco, cigarettes. Now, the consequences of smoking tobacco, cigarettes, she got lung cancer. She has an evil that is a sin, and an evil that's a consequence, the, the sin being the cigarette, and the consequence being the lung cancer. Okay? Now... Here's a, here's a second example of, e of evil. You got some girls, they went to the mall, they window shop, they did girl things, and they're, they're driving home, and they're having a good time, good clean time, they're talking. They're talking about girl things and school subjects and boys and everything like that. They're, they're not doing no sin, they're not doing no evil. They're going home. They're going home at a respectable time. If they have anything, they, they, they got Coca-Cola or Pepsi. Okay? Now you have a guy who, who walks out of a bar. He's as intoxicated. He's as drunk as a skunk. He gets behind the wheel of the car. Now, he has committed evil. He has sinned in drinking alcohol. Now he's going to sin by driving while intoxicated. He gets in that car. He's going down the road. Alcohol sin and alcohol DUI. He's going down the road. And here's these girls. They've done nothing wrong. They had a good day. They had a good clean day. They're on their way home. They got Coke and Pepsi. That drunk nails their car. A major accident. Or a little accident. One, two, three, or four of those girls die. Maybe the girls die, one girl ends up paralyzed for life, or one girl ends up with a prosthetic leg, or one girl, I mean, just scarred. What did the girls do? They didn't do nothing wrong in sin. Now, what is the evil of those girls? They suffered from a motor vehicle accident. Because of another man's sin. You can have evil. Without sinning. But we are all sinners. So evil happens. Now somewhere. Now those girls in that car. They didn't do anything wrong. At the mall. They didn't shop there. They didn't do anything wrong. They're, they're driving the speed limit. They're having soda. 
They didn't do anything wrong. But sometimes they lied. Sometimes they, they coveted. Somewhere along the line, they broke the nine commandments just as much as that man behind the wheel. And if one, two, three, or four of those girls die, or if one, two, or three of those girls are paralyzed, one, two, three, or four of those girls are, are injured for life, that is a consequence we're going to look at in a moment of sin. God did not do it. Matter of fact, God warned that guy. They, they, they tell you, don't drink and drive, don't drink and drive, don't drink and drive. That guy's been warned. That driver, that the, the car, the girl, she's been warned, look out for other bad drivers. So when the fact is, when we look at Isaiah 45, 7, God created evil. Sometimes it's a judgment. Hey, you want to smoke cigarettes? Okay, fine. I'll give you lung cancer. As a nation, you want to reject me? Fine, I'll give you COVID-19. I'll cause a death in your family. I'll have you lose your job. I'll have you lose your car. I, whatever. An evil could be in judgment because of sin. In your life. Or evil can happen to you. Be, and you've done nothing wrong. And that's where people get the problem with God. They didn't do anything wrong. Oh yes they did. They broke the nine commandments sometime in their life. And if they didn't break the nine commandments. They came from a mother's womb. They were conceived in iniquity and in sin. I'm sorry. The day that your father's sperm. And the egg of your mother came together, a sinner was conceived. Sometimes those sinners are not born. Still born. Some of them sinners are born. Some of those sinners may die days. My brother, my second brother, last lasted hours. He was born October, Friday the 13th, and he died October Friday the 13th, that day. He lasted hours. My mom never even got to see him. Some of them sinners born, they, they, they go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, even over 100 years. You say, well, some people, they, they, nothing happens to them. Well, there's a judgment. We're not going to look at that, but there's a judgment. There's a judgment for the saved and for the lost coming. So you see, God causes evil as form of a judge, judgment. And when we think, oh, nothing, they didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, they did. What did they do wrong? They were conceived in sin. They all had sinned. You know, it comes down, frankly, as you turn to Ezekiel 28. You know, we say that we see some, oh, they deserve to go to jail. Right? They deserve the death penalty. They deserve, you know, if everybody got their just desserts, we all be locked up in jail. I've had a couple times in my life. I've had the police. I sat in the police station. I'm not going to get into detail. But man, if God didn't change it, I was going to go to jail. Ezekiel 28, 13. Thou hast been in Eden. Pay attention to that. Okay. Verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covered, and set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God, that's heaven. Thou walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. I don't understand that. Now, we're talking about Satan. This is the devil. This is Lucifer. Thou was perfect in thy ways. From the day thou was created, Lucifer was created. The angels were created. 
The seraphims were created. God was never created. God's the creator. So Lucifer was a cherubim that he was created. He was perfect. He was in heaven. Till iniquity. You remember, remember Psalms 51.5? To iniquity was found in name. Iniquity and sin came not by God, not by man, by Lucifer. Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? If your Bible didn't say son of the morning, you better get rid of it. How thou art cut down to the ground which did weaken the nation. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mountain of congregation of the size of the north. I will ascend to the heights of the club. I will be like the most high. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. Lucifer said, I'll take over heaven. Iniquity. I'll be the almighty God. Listen, he told Jesus, you fall down and worship me. Told that to Jesus. I believe he tells that to Republicans and Democrats and independents and kings and queens, prime ministers, who have you, whatever titles they're called. I believe many fall. It's not God that iniquity came from. It's from Satan. It's from Lucifer. Now, Revelation 12. I didn't write this one down, but it just came to mind. Revelation 12, 9. And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent, called the devil and Satan. The devil and Satan. The old serpent. Genesis 3. Now the serpent, there he is, was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. He said unto the woman, Yea, God said, questioning what God said. Anybody comes up and starts questioning what God said, beware. You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. All right, so Lucifer is already fallen. He's already iniquity. He's already got sin. God reforms the earth. God creates trees and bushes and grass and rattlesnakes and cows and fish and birds. And, and he makes a man and a woman. That man and woman is made, created by the Creator God for a fellowship. When you come down to chapter 3, verse 8, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the Lord God called and said, Where art thou? See, Adam and Eve and man were made to praise and worship God. But there's this being called Lucifer that has fallen, the serpent, the devil, Satan. And he comes into the garden, Ezekiel 28. He's got iniquity. And he's got these two perfect being without sin, like he was, and a third of the angels in heaven. Things have changed now. 
So he shows up to the woman. And he starts questioning the word of God. And as a result, the, verse 6, the, when the woman saw the tree was good for food, and that was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also her husband with her, and he did eat. Now look at chapter 2, verse 17. Speaking to the man, the woman hasn't been created yet, but still. Genesis 2, 17. But the tree of knowledge, with, of good, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. What's death? The wages of sin is what? Death. If you eat this tree of the knowledge of good and evil... You will become sinner. And what I will give you is death. God is warning them. Or him, Adam. Okay? The wages sin of death. Adam and Eve, soon to be created, are not going to die yet. God says, if you eat that fruit, you're going to die. The wages of sin is death. You're not a sinner now, but you eat that fruit, sin will come into you. Genesis 3. Verse 6. She took the fruit thereof and did eat. Exactly what God said not to. Gave also her husband with her, and he did eat. Now they're going to die. Now they are sinners. They disobeyed God's warning. You know what? There are all kinds of warnings out there put by God. You want to go out there and drink alcohol? There's warnings about drinking alcohol. You want to smoke cigarettes? There's warning about smoking cigarettes. There's warnings about tobacco. There's warning about drugs. There's warnings about overeating. There's, war there's warnings about uh, uh, adultery and fornication. There's a preacher preaching on the street about the gospel. There's a preacher preaching... Not the pulpit. There's a preacher on the radio. There's a preacher in the television. There's the Bible telling you. This is all about sin. Where did it come from? It came from Lucifer. Who was holy. And clean. Until iniquity came into him. He shows up in the garden. And he convinces Man, to do what God told them not to do, and the warning is death. Death is brought by sin. I know they didn't die that day. Not all babies are are die when they're conceived. Some of them last 100 years. Now, what's the result? Look at, unto the woman, he said, verse 16, I will greatly multiply sorrow. Sorrow is because of sin. Thy conception. There it is. Woman. Mothers. In that womb, you just conceived a sinner. Every conception in that woman's tummy, womb, That human being in her womb will die and go to heaven or will go to hell. Nowhere else. That's a whole different, that's a whole different study. Just be, well, where, where do babies in the womb go? They go to heaven. They're sinners, but they have they think, no knowledge of sin. Now, I don't know what age it is for any particular child, but when a child is innocently not knowing that he has sinned against God. I mean, he could sin against mom. No, hey, that cookie. Mommy doesn't want me to take that cookie. All right. He's not going to go to hell because he stole a cookie from mom. When he realizes that not only did he steal that cookie from mom, but he's also sinned against his God. <laughs> Okay, now, 
But that's a whole other study. Those that are conceived in the womb don't know, don't know nothing. And it's a human life. It's a sinner. Because if it wasn't human life, it wouldn't die. If you aborted or other poor means for it not to survive. Don't mess with the words with the Bible. Modern Bibles mess with the words. Say like conception, sorrow. Why is my wife always crying? Right there. She ate the fruit. And shall bring forth children. Your children, ma'am, are going to give you tears because you ate the fruit that God told you not to eat. See, not only is the wages of sin is death, but the wages of sin is sorrow. Trouble. Problem. All right, that girl may not have died in that car accident with that, with that drunk driver. She may be scarred for life. She may have sorrows and pain. Sin for man went all the way back to Genesis 3. Was it? Six. Here's where sin in man. With the tree desired to make one wife, she took the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. Bingo! Man's a sinner. Now, every single child of Adam and Eve. Conceived in the womb of a woman or test to you got a, a male seed to sperm and you got the egg from a woman You put them together. You got a bouncing baby sinner. It's either male or female There it is So we come back to Adam man Where is it? He says, and I, because thou hast hearkened the voice of thy wife and eat the tree which I command thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Look, look at God reminding Adam. You know what's going to happen at either judgment, saved or lost? God's going to remind you. Those people that hear my loud mouth preaching and did not hear to the gospel, rejected gospel, rejected Jesus, they're, somehow they're going to hear me again. They're going to hear me preach the gospel. All right, curses the ground for thy sake. Floods, famine, drought, birds, locusts, worms, mildew. Sorrow, he gets too. Thorns and thistles, weeds. There was no weeds until we became sin. Herbs. Thou eat the herbs. Death, verse 19. That's where you get d dust unto dust. For dust thou art, and dust thou shalt return. Why? Because you're a sinner now. And in the womb, if you can kill that fetus, it's a sinner. It's a human. That solves your, that solves your abortion. All right, let's move on. First Corinthians. And you got to say one question while we turn to First Corinthians. And here's the typical question. I don't have an answer. Why did God allow it? I don't know. It happened. God allowed it. What did God do about it? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believes on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Man came up with the disease called sin. God came up with the cure. Jesus Christ. It's called free will. You want to sin? You want to, you want to disobey God? Okay. 
Adam and Eve at any time could have said, God, we need help with this serpent here. They didn't. Look at 1 Corinthians 15, 22. For as in Adam all die sinners, the wages of sin is death. So why are you a sinner? You're born of Adam. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. In Christ is life. Christ was sinless. But he died for our sins being sinless. Adam gives us death. Christ gave us life. There is a cure for the terminal death of sin. Even in the Old Testament, it's Jesus Christ. All those sacrifices the Jews had pointed to the Messiah. The Gentiles, those who were not Jews, and even before the call of Abraham and all that, God gave man a conscience. You need to be educated out of that conscience. But that's another one. So, the, the sins did not come from God. The consequences of sin come from God. Sin came from Lucifer, who fell and became the devil and Satan, which became that old serpent. Okay, First Timothy, First Timothy, two fourteen. Still going. Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So the devil who was Lucifer, who sinned in the iniquity of pride in heaven, fell, showed up in the garden as that serpent, and deceived Eve into doing what God said not to do, that brought sin into her, which brought death. Adam taking a look at his wife, knowing what had happened, As an ambassador and a sign and a symbol of Jesus Christ. Adam took that fruit. We don't know if it was an apple. That was in her hands. And every woman wants a man that will die for her. He took a bite of that fruit to die with her. So now from Adam... We have death. The wages of sin is death. We got old sinful Adam. And in Christ we have the sinless perfection of God himself. Made of a man, made of a woman. To be man. God, Jesus is 100% God, 100% man. Okay. Man, sins came from Adam, who loved Eve, who was deceived by the serpent, who was the devil or Satan, which was the cause of iniquity. Of Lucifer who fell. Uh oh, well, that's not fair. That's not fair, John 1. Who said life is fair? Okay, now we're all saying all this happens. John 1.29. The answer is this. 
The next day, John, John the Baptist sees Jesus coming unto him and says, Behold the Lamb of God, that's Jesus Christ, which take away the sin of the world. How's that happen? Acts 16, 31, or 30. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? Hell. Because sinners who don't repent, who don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, go to hell. Sinners who put their faith and trust in what God said, they go to heaven. It's plain and simple. 